Hosting a launch of the prison letters of Nelson Mandela in honor of Nelson Mandela International Day and the Mandela Centenary. The book is composed of 255 of Madiba's letters, many of which have never been published. The letters provide an insight into how Mandela maintained his inner spirits and how he engaged with an outside world that became increasingly outraged by his plight. We now go to New New York, where our correspondent Sharon Bryce Peace has more on the launch of the book. Thanks so much, Paul, and that wonderful intro uh, really saves me from having to do one uh, from the UN bookstore here at UN headquarters in New York. Just, of course, concluded uh, the launch of that book, as you mentioned, and I am joined by the editor of the book, Sam Fent, also of the Nelson Mandela Foundation, and uh, Zama Swazi uh, Dlamini Mandela, who is, of course, the granddaughter of Madiba and Mum Winnie Madiki, Madikizela Mandela. Of course, she also wrote the foreword to the book. Ladies, a warm welcome. Congratulations on this wonderful book. Sam, let's begin with you. Uh, this was a labor of love, essentially. This has a, uh, been a decade in the making. You were sent to the National Archives in South, in South Africa to make copies and to start collating uh, the, the decades of writing from Madiba. What was this process like for you, and how has it touched you in a personal way? Well, it was, it was a very huge privilege to be able to go through his letters. It's not always an easy thing to do, but and I didn't know in the beginning it was going to end up as, as a book, but I really do feel quite honored that I'm able to tell the world his story from prison in his own words of those 27 years. What's your sense as being part of the Mandela family, reflecting on the writings of your grandfather father from inside prison? How has that touched you and what has it evoked within your spirit? It's uh, really given me a deep insight into my grandfather and what it really took for him to um, go through and get through his time on Robben Island. But I think also just the family dynamics that uh, played themselves out and how he was husband, um, how he was a father. And, um, you know, obviously with my mom and my aunts and my uncles, uh, for me, I feel like they're really um, the victims because they had to grow up without parents. Um, many times but also I think you know just the love between my grandparents and my grandmother being such a critical and central part of history and for me this sets her back exactly where she belongs in terms of our history and what she did and her contribution. Sam what struck me about these letters is really the writing style of Madiba the the dignified nature of being so frustrated by the slow movement of some of the things like, you know, his application for books and prescribed books so that he could study that wouldn't come in the letters that he would write. It was always in a dignified way. Uh, the word upright comes to mind. I mean, what did you make of his sense of dignity uh, despite the, the, the adversity he was facing? Well, he decided on day one in prison never to let them take his dignity away. And he remained true to that. But he was a lawyer recognized the importance of the written record. What I liked and was struck by was he would say, would you be so kind as to give me this? In other words, we would be going, dudes, this, you know, like hurry up and help. But he always was very kind and respectful the whole way through. And often, but often it would be the third time that request would be made months apart. There often wouldn't be a response to those letters. I would have been a very frustrated individual. Why was that important not to, to show them that, he was, that they were perhaps getting to him? Well, you know what? Uncle Kathy Ahmed Kathrada told me that in all his 18 years on Robben Island, he, never, he lost his temper twice. So if he's got anything to teach all of us, we can maybe never ever lose our tempers. I mean, he just decided and he stuck to his, res he was resolute about it. I'm not going to let them take my dignity away. Zamaswazi, one of the things that also struck me about this was that it's really important for the younger generation, right? I was probably 11 years old when Madiba came out of prison. My mother called me over, said, watch this, you'll understand later. But it, uh, reading these letters really gives one a sense of the 27 years. I think it, it's become such a throwaway number in many ways. 27 years, you know, many people growing up with Madiba as president or out of jail, they don't quite understand what 27 years actually means. And these letters really give you a sense of just the slow ticking of that clock. 
I mean, if you look at the Holocaust, it's something that we're still talking about today. It's a, it's a narrative that essentially we're being taught about all the time. And for me, I think apartheid is exactly that. And I think my grandfather's um, imprisonment and the brutality and the violence of apartheid is something that we continuously need to be reminded of and that we need to learn. But more than anything, I think, like Sam said, it's his dignity and how he remained resolute and steadfast and how he his respect for himself, his respect for his fellow um, warders, his fellow inmates and, and I think these are all values and principles which we can all look to ourselves to try and emulate in some kind of way um, I know that I a lot of people right now are saying that um, our history is, is is not something that was negotiated well but I, I, I would love for people to put themselves in his shoes and try to understand what they would have done differently uh, he says himself he would never he wouldn't do anything differently so for me that says a lot about who he was as a person and I really just feel like as young people we really can look to that um, and we can just understand what it took for us to have what we have I think we've forgotten but I feel like we're doing I don't know if it's our young people a disservice um, by not ensuring that we make sure that the history is being told over and over again. And for me, this is exactly that. It's just telling it over and over again and reinforcing it and reminding people where we come from. What I was also touched by in reading this was him trying to be a parent from the confines of that jail cell. Whether you were, you know, do your studies, he would write to his daughters and make sure that you, you do well. But you, you also write in the foreword that it was almost impossible for him to be that father despite his attempts at that. Just speak to that relationship that he tried to foster and, and, and the failure therein, I suppose. Sure, and that was a very difficult emotional journey for me to grapple and understand how he was trying to be there for his children, my mom, my aunts, my uncles. And um, I think the thing, the beauty about it though is that he remained um, consistent and he remained trying to parent them no matter how difficult it was and trying to support them and my grandmother all the time. And the, the letters are the only way in which they had to actually have some semblance of a family life and, that's all, and that kept him going. So for me, a lot of it was very emotional. I, I, I could get through whatever I could get through but the rest of it I just couldn't because it was too painful. Um, but I think it's a testament to um, who he is and what he sacrificed and what he did. I mean, you always said, I don't belong to you guys, I belong to the world, and that's just what I was put here to do, is to serve. Um, so I think, you know, if we can take anything from him is to learn how to serve, because he was a person of service. Sam, let's talk a bit about the process, right? Ten years in the making, I think 255 letters, is it? 620 pages. You said you had a lot of help from Mamwini, Madikizela Mandela, people like Mac Maharaj. What was that process like? Well, firstly, Mac was amazing. He was one of the very few surviving prisoners from B section Robben Island. And I could email him, call him, and say, What was this? How did that work? And he was amazing. And Mamwini, Swati, and I used to go and sit with her. And we would say, for example, I said, you know, you came to, South, to, to Johannesburg when you were young in the 50s and you stayed at the Helping Hand boarding house. Where was that? And she goes, oh, 76 Hunt Street, Jeppistown. And she would also be able to identify people that we didn't know who, who they were. And that led us to new people and their families and they could help with with uh, identifying other people and other details in the letters. So we owe her and Mac a huge vote of gratitude. I want to hear from her granddaughter on that. Just just speak to the, the impact of your, your, your late gran uh, grandmother and the relationship that they had and, and what this book might have meant to her at its completion. Well, the thing that I love the most about this is that I feel that it sets the record straight in terms of my grandmother's contribution towards the struggle and what she did and what she gave up and what she sacrificed and the fact that they were husband and wife who loved each other for for his entire time on Robin Island and I think beyond that and for me I think it, it kind of reminds us of what she did and what she contributed um, and you know my grandfather they speak very fondly and they love each other and you know just like the sense of just you know like camaraderie and you know they're both activists and they're both politicians and they feel closer to each other when they're both you know in prison it, you know speaks a lot to the fact that they were they were I believe really put here to live out a specific purpose what they did but for me I, I'm 
I'm great that it is in, it is in his own words, and um, I, I, it's a homage to her. Absolutely, this book for me is that because her voice is also throughout this book, through his eyes. But you really get to experience her in a different way, um, and I think that South Africans will be very much intrigued, and I think they'll really enjoy it because there's some very touching moments between the two of them, just as husband and wife, and there's some very funny bits as well. Um, so. It's not just it's not just the bad but I think there's also good in it and I think you know we should also celebrate their lives um, and not look to the fact that you know there was a struggle indeed there was but I think let's just build from that uh, so for me it's really a homage to both my my grandparents ladies thank you so much uh, Zama Swazi and uh, Sam Fentis there's still some people waiting for some book signings so I'm gonna let you go thanks so much and congratulations thanks so much for speaking with us uh, Zama Swazi Lamini Mandela of course the granddaughter of uh, Madiba and Mamwini Madigizela Mandela and Sam Fenta uh, of the Nelson Mandela Foundation also editor of this book uh, and let's hope that some Americans as well not only South Africans are intrigued uh, by its contents uh, from the UN bookstore here at the UN headquarters in New York back to our studio and colleagues in Johannesburg. And that was indeed our U.S. correspondent, Sherwin Rice Peace, coming to us live from New York. It is time